Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Santa Barbara Forum. Uh, intermittently, we do a show, Rob Raffelli and I do a show together, and this is one of those nights when we are doing a show together. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about, well, the kind of the show is about media watch, as we call it. Uh, that sort of has the, what the media is talking about, and very quite honestly, what the people who are using the media for their own benefit. Uh, media today, especially in, in not only the general media, but, but the social media too, of course. That's the big biggie these days. So that's where we're going to begin, uh, to start with some of that stuff. And one of the topics that's really bugged me in the last, I'll give you a chance to talk about this, Rob, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off on this a little I, bit. I know nothing. Uh, one of the things that really bugged me was drinking out of the toilets. AOC, as you can see by the graphic here in, on the screen, if you'll show that, I don't know if you can see it very well. But there's a picture there, a, a cartoon essentially, of a woman named Alejandra, Alexandria, I guess, Opacio Cortez, which we'll now always refer to as AOC, which is what the media is, is always calling her now because I don't think they want to say that every time. And she's one of the, uh, the squad, as they call it. For those of you that haven't uh, been watching, if you've been living, living in, a, 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 in a cave, over the last few years, the uh, last few months and so on, uh, you would have known about this. Anyway, one of the things that she did, she's a congresswoman from New York City, and uh, she was elected. She beat the incumbent Democrat in the, in the district who had served like 12 terms or something like that for a long time. It's one of the hierarchy of the, uh, uh, one of the big shots in the House uh, hierarchy, uh, uh, and she defeated him in the primary, and of course it was a given that the Democrat would be elected in this particular district, which is a to total blue, as they say, uh, she was, she was, and she was elected. Well, it didn't take long for her to find out that, to find out the media cameras were rolling, and whatever she said, they'd be recorded. And in fact, she's taken a lot, and as, as a lot of people are suggesting now even, she and the other three of the squad have taken over the Democratic Party. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, the Democratic Speaker of the House, uh, been in Congress for a long time, and has suggested that in many places where she's kind of lost control. The party, the Democratic Party, is leaning very left right now, and this the AOC is at the heart of it. Well, one of the things she did was go down to the border and visit the concentration camps, as she calls them, uh, down there, the, the, where the immigrants are being held. Uh, that they're being they give up basically once they get across the river or the border they automatically give up and they go into these uh, detention centers what she what she calls concentration camps and one of the things she came back with as she was leaving she was being interviewed and so on she said she spoke to a woman who was uh, in the camp that said that the guards were making them drink out of the toilets hopefully some of you heard about this drink out of the toilets, which is uh, obviously, if you're, if you, uh, has, has a suggestion that that's very unsanitary, of course. Well, the picture of the, why don't we show the picture of the toilet that was in fact being that people that they have in, in the prisons, in the, in the uh, in retention centers, not prisons. Oh, by the way, it's a concentration camp that those people can leave anytime they want. Say, I give up, I'm going back to Nicaragua or, or Salvador or, or Honduras or wherever. And they're coming from all over the world, basically, going through those countries to get to Mexico, to get to our United States borders. But I'll go back to my country. I don't want to be in this, retention, this detention center. They can get out of it anytime they want. Just say, I'm, I want out. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm going back to yeah. my country voluntarily. The, yeah, the guards literally inform them, and they're informed several ways, you are not our prisoner. You may leave any time you wish. You may not remain in the United States when you choose to do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you are not our prisoner. You may leave. Yeah. So, and they're basically, you know, they're they're putting another helping of breakfast on their tray and saying, "No, nah, I'm good." Yeah, that's good, <laughs> and so on. Anyway, as you see on the picture, go back to the picture here, please. Hello, anybody there? Okay, this is the toilet we're talking about, uh, the the toilet, and that looks like a toilet. There it is, toilet. But at the top, you may see there's a sink also up here on, uh, on, on that same toilet and so on. But the unit itself, the whole unit of there, is, it looks like a toilet. Now, to somebody, and I'll explain what that is, of course, is the sink is where you wash your face, brush your teeth, and, and so on. You do your little, little toilet in, in, the, uh, in the morning. Uh, 
uh, shave and so on. The water goes out of that sink into a tank that's in this tube right here, and there's a siphon. The water coming out of there cannot touch the water going into the sink. The water goes in. There's, all, there's siphons. That's what they have to have in, in, uh, to be sanitary in the plumbing business. Goes into the tank of the toilet tank, which is the, the, the regular toilet tank. I want the picture back, please, so I can point it out. Thank you. Goes into the tank here, okay? Now, when you go to the bathroom on the toilet now, you, uh, I don't know if you even have to flush it, doesn't even see an arm on it and so on, but there's a siphon there too between the, the water going into the sink and the tank that where the, uh, holds the water that's going to be going into the toilet, there's a gap, there's an air gap, so it doesn't siphon back up into the system. And then when you use the, use the bathroom, you, you flush the toilet, and there, here again is the same thing, uh, any, any regular toilet in fact, or no, normal toilet, the, the, the water from the tank goes in, goes, you flush, and there's a little flapper, if anybody, most of you probably never lifted up that tank top to see what was in there, but there's a little a flap that goes up, I replaced literally hundreds of those. Uh, there's a flap that goes up and the water, when you push the handle down, the, uh, it lifts the flap, very mechanical, put the, there's a little chain that goes down and up, down it goes, okay? Now, when it goes down there, uh, it, it, uh, uh, the water flushes then in the toilet and it goes into the system, into the regular sewage system, right? Okay. Um, and then when it's over, the flap goes back down again and water fills the tank. In this case, of course, the water is coming from this, the, the, the thing. It seems like a very efficient system, very efficient system to save water, obviously. Otherwise, all that water would go into the sewer and this would go into the, into the sewer system and they'd be wasting water. That would be, however, these things are actually in prisons. This is what they have in prisons. And by the way, it's made of stainless steel. You notice the price here, $2,600 for a toilet. You can go to um, uh, a Home Depot and you can buy a toilet for about $130, just the toilet, okay? Now, the AOC was talking about a woman who, who, who she said were drinking out of a toilet. Now, this woman from, was from, I don't know where she was like, the, maybe Nicaragua or someplace like, one of, the, one of the three countries I've already mentioned, El Salvador, Nicaragua, or, or Honduras. Uh, she mentioned that this is what it was. Now a woman like that coming from the countryside in the country uh, is um, uh, 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 unfamiliar with toilets. She may have seen pictures of toilets and all she saw was a toilet. They don't have these in most places, obviously, these toilets in most, in most places. Uh, her conception of a toilet, looking like a toilet and being told to drink out of a toilet, she sees this and thinks, if the guard did say that, drink out of, drink out of the sink, he's, well, obviously he's talking about this here, she didn't notice this, she, she did, only saw that. Now before you start getting all creamy about, well, a, it, she's an immigrant and maybe she doesn't use, maybe she hasn't seen it, never seen a toilet, never has seen one. So she just assumed she's drinking out of the toilet. Now, if you get, now, before you get creamy about this and so on, there's a movie called El, El Norte. And then there's a scene in that movie where, um, I'm sorry if I'm getting too long-winded here, but I'm just about, just about over. In the scene in that movie called El Norte, where these two, a brother and a sister, some of you may have seen the movie, come up to you, they're illegal, they come to the United States, they're staying in a safe house, supposedly, they're staying in a safe house in Los Angeles. And they're in this house, and it's a mess. There's beds all over. I mean, it's 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 this really bad, really bad shape. Uh, and they go to the bathroom, and this one, the boy, sees this, the, this sees the bathroom, and he has just marveled. Indoor plumbing. This is where the, you can actually go to the bathroom indoors in this country. That bathroom, by the way, was a mess. You wouldn't you wouldn't want to walk into that ba bathroom, let alone use the toilet in, in the place and so on. But to this young man, this, this kid, this was a marvel that he had never seen before. Anyway, that's my spiel. This is AOC's, this is the toilet that they're talking about. And by the way, it's called a suicide toilet. Not because you commit suicide in it, but because you can't. Yeah, you can't. Plus you can't break this one. This is made of stainless steel. Yeah, not, not like so, anyway. some, some people have tenants who break their toilets, but Apparently not here. Not, not here. Anyway, I, 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 th thanks for letting me rant out there a little bit, Rob, I, because I, 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 it gets me that this uh, AOC, who probably didn't ever saw the toilet that was in there, she's referring to well, some, some woman who was uh, coming from a foreign country and probably did not have experience with indoor plumbing. All right. AOC, you know, she's telling you 
this is what happened. And she says, well, this woman told me, and so you weren't inside. No, so you didn't see it. Right. No. Yeah. So she was testifying to facts that she had not actually encountered. Right. Uh, what I'm kind of getting used to that from her, actually from a lot of politicians. They, right. Uh, they go on at length. Uh, do you think, uh, you know, I, I've only seen a very few, and of course, I, you may not realize this, but I haven't been in prison. So um, I haven't seen one of these up close. But I have seen a few um, more home style. If you want, we can run through a few of those pictures. Sure, yeah, let's we'll see them. Or we can just yeah, this them. is a this yeah. is a there's a, there's all kinds of these toilets. If you want to go to Amazon, you can order one of these. There's literally hundreds of styles. Yeah, pretty good looking. In fact, and, there's one and, there. Uh, sure, and that's got a sink on top. Yeah. So you flush the toilet, you get up and wash your hands, and what the water you're using to wash your hands is also helping to refill the tank. And look at that. Look so, at the look at all the stuff. This is this is obviously in somebody's bathroom. <laughs> and in a rather narrow spot. Yeah. It's kind of nice actually. It's, yeah. It's giving me interior decoration ideas. Like, I ought to hire someone to do that because I don't do it well. Again, got a nice sink and spigot on the top. Yeah. This, this is really kind of a neat one. I guess these are shelves that come out or something like that. Yeah. This is the spigot and this is the toilet here. I don't know if you get the toilet rolls out or, yeah, I guess it does roll out like that and so on. What? That's pretty nice. <laughs> it is. It's a little too artistic for me. Yeah, right. Uh, generally, I don't like to have any appliances that I don't understand, especially <laughs> in the bathroom. Right. Now I was. Um, There's another one too. I could just see uh, the birds perching on that and bathing. Yeah. And I now here you can't see the toilet. Now this what you, you saw this is a sink. You don't see the toilet. Right, but I recognize right the apparatus. So is. I'm saying, yeah. if that's not a toilet, I'm going to be greatly surprised. Mm -hmm. I <coughs> I kind of like this one with the the tank detached. <coughs> that's yeah. A, that's got a certain style. Attached to the wall. That that's part of the toilet. <laughs> yeah. That's the tank for the toilet. Sure. I don't know if anybody sees what we used to call the WC, the water closets, but yeah. I would visit, when I was very small, my uh, my mother's aunt, and she was living in a place that was already pretty old, even as she was pretty old, and it was the seat here, and maybe um, almost, almost the tank was almost a, a person height up. Yeah, right. And uh, and you pulled a string like you're turning on a light yeah. with, a, with the string, and that flushed, you know, it had a pretty big pressure head, so that really flushed. Yeah, that, that's flushed. That, you know, that's the whole, that's why it was way up high. Anyway, the only place I ever saw one of those uh, in normal life was uh, at my Aunt Ella's house, except that was really my great Aunt Ella. So. All right, now this is one, this is a good, good, a good example of what I want to say about it. And most of them, the sink, well, the sink is here, I guess, the same thing and so on. Um, but in some of them, the sink is off to the side. You have to, you have to straddle the toilet standing up to get, to get to the sink and all that. So that seems to be a little better model and so on. But that's the same idea. You're not drinking out of the toilet. No. You're using, the, using a sink. It, it's, it's one big appliance, but no, yeah. you're not drinking water that's been through the bowl. You think environmentalists would be real happy with a situation like that. Yeah, you're, you're make, it mandatory. make a law that you have to put these in your house from now on. Yeah, that's what I want is another <laughs> law. I don't get yeah. that idea, however. <laughs> yeah. Anybody yeah, there's the one I'm talking about. Here's the toilet and here's the sink and you can stand right in front of the sink and, the, and, and then use the toilet from there. Right. That seems to be a little, you would have to straddle the toilet to use the sink. And if you're in prison, I guess it doesn't really matter that much. I, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure what it's like, but it's probably the least of your worries. Yeah. I mean, we may be coming to the end of our Toilet, toilet, toilet story and so on. I, I may go back to it well, again. We could shorten that to Toy Story, but with an eye. Yeah, but I, I think a well, lot of people story. haven't. I, I, when I it was pointed out that was pointed out to me by the way, our friend Jim Worthen, who had done, who had seen it. He does, does a lot of. He's a very connected guy. He knows what's going on, and he suggested that. Remember, yeah. we were over over at uh, having drinks there on Friday night. Even he hasn't been in prison that much. Yeah, and he, yeah, he, but he said that's what it was, and maybe he hadn't seen it. So on, I thought I didn't. I didn't know. I've been in the plumbing business for a long, long time. I've seen a lot of toilets in my time, and uh, I've never seen a situation like this. Maybe you should, you know, for save water. That might be a real, real thing to do. At any rate, there's what AOC again. She didn't see it. She just believed some woman who probably didn't know what a toilet looked like. Yeah, she, she looked, she'd seen pictures of them, but she had never actually used one in, uh, in her. And that, that, that's another one. When you were talking earlier in the yeah. show, 
when they were coming up from uh, this long march through Mexico, and that was or, uh, or an, or di- uh, an ordeal, 10,000 people, <laughs> they had to go to bathroom someplace. I don't think they, I don't think they stopped. They had, they had the Marburg uh, uh, little uh, portable toilets all along the way. I never saw any pictures of that and so on. Now when they get, now when they get to the, the retention center, they're using a modern convenience that, quite honestly, a lot of people should have in their homes to save water. Yeah, it's forward-looking on the part of uh, yeah, exactly. of the government. Exactly. By the way, again, I call them suicide toilets. They have them in prisons. How you would make commit suicide in that? Thing, I don't, I'm not really sure, and so on. But um, maybe it, uh, I don't know. Well, I think it might have to do with the fact that with the tank covered up like that, it may be that you can't even pull the top off and uh, jam your head into uh, to drown yourself. Yeah. Anyway, in the, in the tank. I don't know. That's the whole way to die. Um, boy, I'm telling you, <laughs> and come back and see your said this. And that, well, you, actually, that's another thing. You already can't take the top off of these things. There's yeah. no way to take take the it, top it, off. Or certainly not without tools. And by the way, you can drink water out of a toilet, out of the t- tank, because that's the fresh water that's going to be going to be going down into the system. After the flap goes down, then that water fill, that water in the tank fills up again. Yeah, that, that's and fresh that water out of the pipe. That, but that, in fact, is the way you can do it. But that has nothing to do with the story I'm telling now. AOC just didn't see it. But that is a good emergency tip. If yeah. the, you know, the uh, water pressure goes off, there's a, a problem. You know, you've, you've at least got uh, f- you know, several gallons of fresh water there that uh, you, you could prevent yourself from uh, suffering too badly from thirst because it's just fresh water straight out of the, uh, out of the pipe and into a tank. And it's never seen any kind of contamination. Anyway, the media, and that's, that's where the show is called Media Watch and so on. The media, and I never saw pictures of these toilets, or never saw a picture of a toilet that supposedly people were drinking, uh, drinking out of. Ah, you remind me of a, a phrase that we don't use anymore. It's investigative journalism. You know, that's where the journalist actually goes and takes a look. Yeah. Or goes and talks to the people involved, that sort of thing. Yeah. No, nah, we just, so-and-so said... Yeah, others were quoted. As, so I look. I think, don't any of you know anything? Yeah, it's like they they would probably talk about what people say is in the Constitution. Yeah, and I look and say it's five pages. Read it. Yeah, right. Exactly. Probably a lot of them haven't read it. They certainly haven't read the laws that get passed in Congress either. Well, and neither did the guys who pass them. I remember it was a uh, uh, talk about investigative reporters. There was a reporter who worked for uh, uh, KYT for a long. I can't remember her name. She went to Sacramento. It'll come, name will come to me. Edie, Eddie, Eddie Lambert. I call her Eddie Lambert, Eddie Lambert, but I call her Eddie Lambert. Her idea was, of a do a show was to go out with your microphone and your camera guy and get your makeup on and all that stuff, and then you could go out and do it, you know, do an interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, her idea of an investigative report was to go, to go to Nordstrom's and pick out a new outfit and do the same thing and go out and do the, do the, the uh, thing. They don't, they, don't, they don't know nothing about, most of the time, they know nothing about what, what's really, really going on as investigative reporters. Yeah, I'd be more interested if their, their first job it had works been... both ways, too, by the way. If they'd been a PI first, you know, if they'd been a private investigator, yeah, right. they'd say, fine, now you're a reporter, but like, there's a lot of things you can find out by phoning people and talking to them. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of things you can find out by going over and you know, looking at the house and say, well, is that a limo in the driveway? Mm-hmm. Or uh, <laughs> right. it, it, yeah, is that Tom Cruise uh, sl- slipping over the back uh, ga- gate because he he's romantically involved with the maid? You know what? What's going? <laughs> but I mean, go have a look. Yeah, right. <laughs> don't don't tell me. And they that. always assume, especially depending on their political viewpoint, and it works both ways, Republicans and Democrats, how they can how they can manipulate what they see to the point of view that they really wanted to get across in the first place. You see that all the time in the, when you compare Fox News to uh, MSNBC, for example, or even CNN for sure. Uh, um, when, you see, when you compare, the, you see the same event portrayed in two completely different ways. Mm. And I think quite honest, I guess that's really come to the next subject. Uh, I don't know if you want to comment on this, Rob, at all, but I think people are really kind of getting tired of all this stuff. I think, uh, especially like this toilet. I mean, many of us even cares about that kind of stuff and so on. Uh, you know, I think in that case you you care about it, but yeah. uh, I think the the rest of the country is getting a little bit um, bored with the whole thing. For example, the Mueller uh, mm-hmm. interview now it was supposed to be a big show and it was going to be watched and nobody's read the book. As they, 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 the uh, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, 
uh, was her name, Nadler, said, he says, uh, nobody read the book, but they wanted, everybody's going to watch the movie. Well, unfortunately, nobody oh. did. Nobody went, spent, I don't think anybody, oh. I sure as heck did, seven hours watching that. Well, when, when it comes to uh, the movie, which I don't imagine will really be made, you can believe it would be based on a true story. <laughs> Like, there really was some, some guys in an office, and some of them were attorneys. Yeah, right. They may not have said, attorneys. Yeah, they, they may not have said any of these things, and the people who they spoke to may not have said any of these things, but it's based on a true story. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I, I, wanted, I will climb in there. You know, I'm really interested in this stuff, and I'm getting tired of... Yeah, right, the, there you I go. Mean, like, Same here. E even if it's just, you know, I say... What An, another completely slanted thing that I have to figure out what what really happened first, yeah. and then uh, listen to uh, everybody uh, you know telling me what's happened. Uh, you know, I'm going to use the racist word, racist. Uh, because <laughs> right there, you go. The R word. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't. You know, I, I've I've known a lot of people who've said all sorts of things, mostly in jest. Yeah. And. I, uh, and of course, I, I've, I've known people who really were prejudiced against people because of their race and nothing else. Yeah, of course, yeah. But it, uh, it, it just doesn't seem to be a, a dominant factor. Okay, this is, maybe this is my white privilege showing, yeah. but uh, I don't, even the, uh, the white people that I know who, who talk about blacks occasionally, and typically we don't because we don't think of them, we think of that ball player or this doctor or whatever, we don't think of blacks because there is no such thing in your life there's right. in, there's individuals or there's yeah. ball teams or there's um you know people on the other side of a border or something but they're they're, mm -hmm. they're people they're not this amorphous color thing mm -hmm. anyway lots of us may entertain some thoughts that i would call racist or at least discriminatory and i think that i don't i don't defend it i don't encourage it I don't like it in anyone, I wouldn't like it in myself, no. but I will say that it is as natural as breathing. It's instinctual that human populations cling to themselves and look outside and folks who are different may be viewed with a less warmth than the immediate family. Yeah. In other words, there, there's something in your brain that instantly classifies things into us and them. Yeah. So I don't want to blame people for having the instinct that got us where we are today. I, I would, you know, I don't attach any value to, yeah. to, to treating people badly because of it. Yeah. People, in other words, they, they, I don't feel, if I understand you correctly, people have a natural prejudice sometimes. They just because, of, they're be, just because they just want to, they want to make a difference and so on. Uh, and, you know, then there's the people you feel like, but you feel like, the, that's what people are. In some way, you, you feel like the people that, remind you of you or who you know are vetted mm -hmm. and the others uh, are viewed with necessarily with more suspicion because you know less about them. Yeah. In fact, the, the more you know about them, the, uh, the, uh, the less any prejudice needs to... Or even one little thing. Cause be, uh, or black, for example. I always give, like to give the example. You're on the Santa Ana Freeway on mm -hmm. a nice hot afternoon mm -hmm. on, a, on a Friday night and it's packed solid with, with cars, right? and the, the air conditioning in your car doesn't work or you don't have an air conditioning in your car and here you are on the freeway and you hate everybody black people brown people green people yellow people red people uh chartreuse oh, yeah. whatever you want to call it old young bald tall uh i hate fast cars uh, I, hate I, slow hate, cars. I hate everybody you basically hate everybody on the freeway with you and so on in fact you kind of hate yourself for, for being there in the first place and so on yeah it, that, it's that, a that, mood. that that kind of tells the story right there and i'm sure everybody has that experience but the fact that the matter is or someone somebody what pulls in front of you or something like that and right away it, you attach it to something that they're old or they're uh, a woman or a woman drivers you know, hear that yeah. all the time well that's just a woman driver <laughs> and uh they you know that that makes them that that makes them or, mad but um yeah. pull they, over they, grandpa that prejudice shows yeah. all the time yeah it, and it's usually pretty empty yeah right on on the they idea didn't, they don't control the weather put it that way <laughs> no they're not to blame for what's going on yeah it just it's it's easy and probably also pretty natural to scapegoat uh again it's not yeah. no, nothing to approve of just to to look at it and say people do this sort of thing and you know if 
everybody but the Eskimos drop dead, you yeah. find out that they do it too. Yeah, right, exactly. Why? Because they're human beings, and human beings are flawed. Flawed, right. Yeah, uh, just try not to be in love with your flaws. That's no excuse, of course, as you just, I'm sure you, uh, no, I know you're, you, mm -hmm. you know, that's what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. There's no excuse for what people do for calling racist remark, and in this case, racist. But I think that's, that's a way overused term. You, def, you define it for the show. What, what is race? What is, oh, that, that's a good one. We, we, <laughs> we, uh, we seem to recognize something, but um, yeah, I would probably go to the physiology stuff, in which case, um, Caucasians, there's a lot of Caucasians who are not very white. Right, yeah, exactly. But, um, and in fact, loads and loads of them, because of the political advantage, uh, are now say, well, I'm a person of color. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm hearing that about, like, Iranians. And I looked at them and I said, <laughs> Iranians are Caucasian. They are white. They uh -huh. have, they have Caucasian features. They have straighter hair. Yeah. They have the Caucasian distribution of blood types. Yeah. They have the Caucasian distribution of sweat glands. Yeah. And I don't want to make anything of it because I don't think it's important. Yeah. But if it's, as to who are they, they're us. Yeah. <laughs> but when they use it like these guys, I, well, like I said, before the show started, I said that, you know, they were all calling Donald Trump racist. And uh, <laughs> he turned the tables on him. He, he called uh, Elijah Cummings, who was black, mm -hmm. uh, congressman from Maryland, the one that uh, he supposedly insulted, and Al Sharpton, uh, he called them racists. Uh, I haven't really read how, how he interprets that and so on, but he was responding to what they called him racist. Well, and I don't think that, that I certainly held, certainly held don't think the term applies. Now, I agree with it too. Racism yeah. is a bad, uh, it, there is no such thing as race, really. Because uh, when they have these genetic tests now and so on, you're so you're 50 percent uh, Middle Eastern, and then you're 50 percent Eskimo, or third, another percentage Eskimo, and a little more Oriental, and and this Indian, much and Hungarian. A little, you got a little uh, uh, what, do, uh, what do you call it? Um, Native American in you, <laughs> in some place. And in the, case, in the case of the senator from Massachusetts, uh, she said she was what, what Cherokee or something, yeah, whatever in the Indian branch was trying to, and she did have some some uh, connection to that, when she had her genetic t testing and so on. Yeah, it, uh, it, it just means that 10 generations back, you know, this would be the equivalent of 10 generations ago, one of your ancestors was Native American. Yeah. And, and of course, 10 generations back, you have, well, you could have 1,024 ancestors uh, because of the way things mix up, you probably have fewer. Yeah. Well, that just uh, that gets me because that you know that's uh, like I said they all came out of Africa and and according to you know a lot of people religious people will not believe this well not you have doubts about this but a lot of a lot of the um, we came out of of the Africa the the uh, the Homo sapiens came out of Africa and one try one of us group the Homo sapiens went across Asia across the Bering Sea into North America and the other uh, uh, group went to, into Europe. You know the, the, the Homo sapiens and so on. He ended up meeting, by the way, in Greenland, and there, when they were, went around the world, the Eskimos saw the the, the, Nor, uh, the Norsemen, the Vikings, and they settled there. And uh, guess who won that battle? The Eskimos. <laughs> they, had the, the, uh, they were better adapted yeah, to the climate. They were better they? adapted. I knew how, they knew how to live in the climate and so on. And uh, the the, uh, the Vikings uh, left, put it that way. Well, this, this they came back, you know, and when the, the, what's his name with uh, Columbus and all that, the Spaniards and that. But uh, the, for, for 500 years, uh, that, that, that would, the, the result of that battle was the, that the Native Americans won. All right, there's something else to to think of there, and it's you know we've had a fair amount of climate variation in the last couple thousand years, not wildly, but there's yeah. what, there's what's called the medieval warming period when um, you know vineyards were uh, much easier to plant in uh, in in the british isles yeah and that was also a great time you know vineyards were uh, much easier to plant in uh, in in the british isles yeah and that was also a great time for by what is fondly known as the little ice age right that's what happened and and, that, and the, the little ice age finished the, um, the, the Viking colony in, in Greenland. Greenland. Yeah, right. It was, you know, essentially, it was a case that they, they went there and they settled someplace that was habitable yeah. 
a couple of centuries later, it wasn't, it wasn't habitable. habitable. <laughs> no longer habitable, right? Right. Yeah, you know, it's, I've always considered it. I mean, if, and we know that it would have been habitable or was habitable to the yeah. uh, to the Eskimos, but it was not to the Vikings. Well, it, but, it, the uh, same, they were it, like, they were really this, from the same. There wasn't genetically, there wasn't much of a difference between the two two sides. But in the in the meantime, they, the, Esk uh, the Eskimos or Native Americans, or whether they were the, the, the there were tribes too, by the way, mm. in in in, the, in that that population, and the, po yeah. the tribe that lived there had adapted to it. I would think that their last they knew how to survive in that kind yeah. of a situation in yeah. the in, in in a little ice age. I would think that their last common ancestor was probably. At least fifteen thousand years ago. Yeah. So, um, well, you know, long enough for us to be modern humans for quite a while. Yeah. But, you know, it's it, that's also time for plenty of genetic drift. Yeah. So you maybe you get different blood type groups, different all sorts of stuff. Yeah. We're getting all off, off the, the, the me, this has a little to do with the yeah. media, but there again, it's one of those things you have to know these things. Uh, I don't know what what I was to else. What, there's so many things on my mind, and I'm sure this well, uh, Rob too. I'll let you go. Sure. Finally, what, what, do you, what do you really want to, what, what's pissing you off these days? <laughs> oh, gee, I, <laughs> butter wouldn't melt in my mouth. I'm, I'm not pissed off. I, just, I don't, um, I'm not going you, you know what yeah, I'm saying. I, I, I know. Um, I guess I'm feeling uh, uh, like people will accuse me of being in a cult at this point because I'm, I'm liking Trump better, not, not less. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. And uh, I, I probably liked him least, maybe um, around the time that he announced, and you thought it was a joke, have, <laughs> like a lot. Kind of, of and of course he'd been, he'd played with the idea before. Yeah, right. And and I always because I, all I knew about him was, um, I knew that he'd had at least one bankruptcy. I knew that he was um, a New York uh, and other places developer. Yeah, and I. I knew, knew he'd had a, a TV show, and by the way, they, somebody actually told me a joke about Trump back when he didn't hadn't had the TV show, but he was well known as a, a very mm -hmm. rich developer. Mm -hmm. They said he was the only person they knew who could uh, stand on the opposite side of the Hudson and look over at the, um, the New York skyline and say, "Got it, got it, need it, got it, need it," <laughs> <laughs> like a collector. Yeah, right. That wasn't so much. That wasn't a joke necessarily either. He, I he, he did a lot of development in in, uh, in New York City. And I, that's not a place I would want to be doing development either. Yeah. It's got to be some some piece of work to uh, navigate through the regulations. There, there. you go. I mean, he, he's to talk about being uh, experienced, and uh, like uh, unlike Obama, who had never run a business in his life, uh, and never had to meet a payroll, and uh, uh, it was elected president of the United States, which basically is the largest corporation, the largest organization in the world. <laughs> in fact, I, I see the federal government. Uh, in its origins as being a mutually beneficial corporation formed by the states. Yeah, right. Cool. Yeah, get uh, get this straight, ladies and gentlemen. We, we may be conservatives in the show, but we're not great fans of major corporations, the Googles and so on of the world either. Um, I don't know, against what they're doing, of course, but uh, yeah, power, in the, uh, power in the hands of almost anybody, the unlimited power, uh, of a few people is dang very dangerous, very dangerous indeed. Yeah, the, the less accountable, the worse. Yeah, exactly. And it, that, again, that that doesn't. Even though I'm not a big fan of government either, it's this isn't about a particular kind of institution. Uh, institutions have a momentum of their own. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody, I've been trying to find the uh, the source of this quote because I, I I've been using it. I don't know who it came from. It's all institutions eventually betray mm -hmm. whatever high-minded and truly fine purposes they once served eventually they serve only themselves yeah and it's because of the staff when, when if it's really successful then people cozy in yeah. and it's a it's a great little place to have your own little empire and right. especially with if you have uh, control of some money flowing through your hands and nobody uh, supervising you mm -hmm. man that's a great little nest yeah, that's what kind of happens, and so on. thank God for elections, as you well know. I, I really believe in elections, <clears throat> because that, in fact, is what what happens. And as you say, with with uh, these empires, uh, the Roman Empire, for example, lasted a lot longer than our current, uh, uh, the American. Uh, it, our, we are what, two hundred fifty years old, something like that. Some a little under. And, yeah. and in fact, that, that's that's why I said to you the other day. Uh, I, I quoted my father to you. He said, there, "There's." 
no way of proving that it works. Yeah, right, exactly. It's still an experiment, as I as I have said. That's it. We're still. It hasn't quite worked this worked through all of its uh, kink, kinks and so on. But it uh, it seems to work pretty well. Yeah. Uh, it, <laughs> Everybody that, gets their chance in, during an election, put it that way. And the voters may make a mistake, but they do get to change their mind every two years. And boy, do they. Yeah, actually. Just like 216 to 218. The Democrats took, 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 uh, took the House back. And the Republicans had had it then for since 2000. And, uh, well, for, uh, there were Democrats had had it from 2006 to 2016, I guess it was. Uh, and the you know, Republicans took over in, I can't remember, you know, all the uh, uh, we, we got it, around, it changes all the time. We, we got it for the first time in a really long time in 94. Yeah. But anyway. Um, 40 years. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was trying to explain this to someone. I didn't quite get it out the other day. But that um, the there, there was something weird with, um, okay, now I am a Republican, but I'm not thrilled with Republican leadership. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that was going on for me was I was saying, Come on, guys! You know, you know, do something, change something, you know, get 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 something that that uh, we we would like. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, yeah, well, we got the Senate, but we don't have the House. And I said, okay, then then we gave them the House in in 2014. Yeah, right. And I'm saying, okay, now, and they said, well, you know, we, but we we don't have the presidency. Okay, they got the presidency, and Who's I'm looking at them, and I'm saying, the only <clears throat> two years I'm sure we got. Both houses and the presidency is now. Yeah, and, and <laughs> for a long time, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, and even in 2014, when we gave them the uh, House and Senate, they, you know, they had campaigned like they were um, huge conservatives and that they were with libertarian leanings. And they just, they, they knew the lingo. They talked to us like they, oh, they, they just loved us, mm -hmm. and they, uh, yeah, it was like, you know, the, the next month, you know, as soon as they were, they had it. It was like we were, um, you know, ugly, embarrassing relatives. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, they, uh, <coughs> oh, gee, hurting not, cats, as they say. Yeah, they they they, they couldn't. Uh, be, they didn't want to talk to you know conservatives. Yeah, you know, they're so. Ew. So what's happening with the Democratic Party right now in the House is, is not is pretty much common. <laughs> Whatever a party thinks takes over, uh, a uh, yeah. one of the uh, branches of government and so on. Yeah, they're th they're thrashing <laughs> it out. Uh, well, that's the legislative branch at least. Now, actually, I'd, I will, I'd, I'd like to try to interpret some of what I'm seeing. I think you know, people have called us right that what we're seeing in the Democratic Party now yeah. is a power struggle between various wings. Yeah. And, of course, the, um, the new folks, not only are they more doctrinaire and more, um, more enthusiastically socialist, but they haven't been sitting at the table with all of the uh, corporations who try to spread the wealth around and, right, and get exactly, what they yeah. what they want. So <clears throat> not, yeah, not, not being military industrial complex as right. they call it. <laughs> and and not, as Eisenhower called it. Not being recipients of the largesse themselves, they're in a good position uh, and this could be good in terms of ideology, but they're in a good position to criticize the old guard because you know they're they've got their feet under the uh, under the complex's table. Mm -hmm. They they're, they're uh, at any rate, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this and I think, see, I, I've been through ideological purity myself, uh, and, uh, in a way, uh, through uh, the libertarian stuff where I just, I wanted, I, and of course, I happen to like libertarian ideas, but I also know that I live in a world full of people who don't uh, agree with it as much as I do. Mm -hmm. And they get to have their way too. You know, even if I think that I'm right or even if I think I'm within my rights, I have to work with other people, and yeah. uh, uh, <coughs> like Adam Smith said about capitalism, we obtain our satisfaction by satisfying other people. Mm -hmm. So you know, we we got to help each other and, uh, and and try to find ways to uh, to move forward together. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, when I when we get into the ideological purity stuff, like we're seeing with the AOC and the Squad, the rest of the Squad is uh, is I think it's Omar. Al, Al, Aliana Presley, uh, yeah, Ilan, Ilan Omar, and uh, who's uh, Owen? Oh, um, well, I can't remember the, the first name of. Uh, is it Rachel? No, no. Her name is. Her name is. Yeah. I don't remember it. Her name is Tlaib. Omar and AOC. That's about. Yeah. Her name is Tlaib. T L A I B. 
Uh, yeah. A lot of people say Talib, but it's but the yeah. TL is first. Well, that, yeah, they, they struck a note in the in the party, the Democratic Party in this case, mm -hmm. uh, that Trump struck when he got elected in 2016. And in a way, it's very similar. In a way, yeah. That's uh, unfortunately, uh, Trump struck uh, struck a note with, uh, well, not a majority, but certainly enough to get elected president. You know, through the electoral college and that. Oh. And who knows what's going to happen here? Actually, I'd, I'd like you to speak a little on that because you and our friend Jim have been telling me about how essentially no recent president has had uh, a majority uh, in, right. in terms of um, True. in terms of popular vote that Bill Clinton was elected with literally 40 percent of the popular vote yeah. because or maybe 40 what because um, it's close that but right around 40 percent he was not yeah. in the majority and that was because yeah. Ross Perot mm -hmm. took 20 percent himself yeah so the, he was, he was so he, 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 and, he and Bush were close, but, um, but he, he, he topped up higher. Yeah. Anyway, we, we haven't had anybody taking a majority of the popular vote, and that includes Hillary Clinton didn't. Yeah. She, she, even though she, as you say, she got the, got the, won the popular vote, she did not get a majority. She had a plurality. And, the, and right. she did not get 50% plus one vote. Now, plurality just means she and got... very few presidents do. She got more than anybody else did. Yeah. But she did not get more than everybody else yeah. did. That's not the way it works. I mean, in France, there's a runoff. In the many countries, there's a runoff. Right. The, run, the runoff says, nobody has a full majority. The top two, you're in here now. Yeah, which seems to make sense, quite yeah. honestly. Somebody's going to walk away with an actual majority. <clears throat> right, exactly. But, um, yeah, we, we're not doing it that way. And, and especially at, at the presidential level, all it really needs to be is, you know, this is an electoral college system. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm just having people howling at me about that. But, you know, until the day that Hillary lost, nobody was saying, you know, when they thought that she would win the electoral college, the electoral college was fine. There was no problem with it. Well, it's, it's always bad when you lose, put it that way. Exactly. Uh, oh, of yeah. course. I, I don't like situations where I lose, and I can probably... Yeah. Think of something that's not fair about yeah. it. Like Kennedy was elected on, like uh, the, in Chicago, to about uh. two hundred thousand votes, and he won. The, he won, but he won the, the electoral college, pretty pretty substantially. At, and, and, well, and, uh, when you say substantially, was it sixty? When you say substantially, was that by more than the electoral votes of Illinois? Yeah, well, that, that's always, I, that's I, always I, a question. I, think that I pointed out it wasn't Chicago, obviously, and so on. Yeah. I, I think he stole it from Nixon, but whatever. You yeah. know, it, it's not, Nixon wasn't uh, any kind of paragon. Although um, I always, I, you know, when I was a, a child, people hated Nixon, but it, it turned out that reporters and intellectuals Hated Nixon. Yeah, right. So and that, and, one and, and the same thing, and that gets back to this media watch that we're doing talking about. When it gets into the media, all of a sudden it's uh, uh, then you, you you hear these supposed experts. They get all, they yeah. have all these experts. Former, they're always former something is or former that you know. For even even Bush or even now there'll be former uh, 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 Trumps uh, uh, mm. in that, in that administration and so on. Uh, sure. Uh, well, look at George Stephanopoulos. <laughs> and they're the experts. Yeah. Suddenly, you know, George Stephanopoulos was, um, you know, press bit, secretary. Yeah. He and he was big in the uh, the Clinton White House. Yeah. And you know, basically, you know, one of one of Bill their Bill Clinton now. Bill Clinton White. Yeah. You know, the only <clears throat> Clinton White House we've had. Yeah. And and he he was you know sort of a, a hatchet man, a real real go getter. Yeah. And when Clinton's office you know, term of office expired, suddenly, what do you know? He's a journalist. Yeah, no, he's Did a journalist. you know that he was a yeah. journalist? Yeah, right. <laughs> Stephanopoulos. Yeah, he, I mean, he suddenly he has a a plum position at yeah. uh, was it ABC? I think it's ABC. Yeah, ABC. Yes. He's uh, got he's uh, got a big job there, that's for sure. Yeah, but I I always look and I say, yeah, you're Clinton's man. Yeah. You know, nothing personal, but don't ask me to to think that you're neutral. Yeah. Well, I, I uh, getting back. To, I guess we'll go back to AOC again then too. But now one of the things she also said, she was quote, she was interviewed. I, mean, I saw her say it. In fact, is that the Twenty Second Amendment of the Constitution, which limits the president to two terms, was uh, was put in place because the Republicans did not want to. This is what exactly what she said. But did not want to have Roosevelt reelected. I'll let you comment on that one. 
Yeah. It, <laughs> Other than the fact that he was dead. <laughs> yeah. It, here's a word I'm kind of fond of. It's ahistorical. It's, <laughs> she doesn't know her history. Yes, it, the, it was um, proposed maybe passed in like around 46 or later. Uh, now, uh, Roosevelt was elected in 44 by, for his fourth term. He was uh, inaugurated in January of 45, yeah. and it was something like uh, March or April of 45. Uh, April. Eight. Okay, so it was April of 45 that he died in office, and, his, and, and Harry Truman, his vice president, succeeded and filled out that term, and then in 48, was um, re-elected, right. was, was, you know, re-elected, defeating Dewey, mm -hmm. and um, who was governor of New York, who was expected to win. Right, expected to win. He had run in 44, I think, even against Roosevelt. But, I think, yeah. Uh, he was not, he, you know, obviously he never got elected president. Um, well, I just fill in the facts then. The, 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 the yeah. second amendment, the 22nd amendment was, was um, proposed, I think, in 1947, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, because of 40, they had been talked about, basically. And by a Democratic uh, Congress, basically. Right. Uh, they they, they changed right. a little bit in Democrat. 1940. Let's see, 1940, 40, uh, 44, the Democrats still controlled it. But 1946, after Truman had gotten elected, the Republicans took over the House, at least, which what, what that's where it has to start as far as the amendments of the Constitution are concerned. But then he got back power in 1989 when he got elected back in 1948. He regained control of the of the House and I mm. think even the Senate. You know that, and it actually didn't get. You know, you got to propose it, and the House and all that passes and so on. But it has to be ratified by three quarters. Right. It it has to be of the states. <clears throat> yeah, it, for a, an amendment to uh, yeah, there, there's there's three methods I think. But anyway, the, this one is um, that the House and the Senate have to pass it by two thirds each. Yeah. And then it goes to the states and it has to be ratified by three quarters of the state legislatures. Yeah. So what, so, you know, people have always complained about how hard it is to amend the Constitution and the, uh, the correct answer to that is, that's the point. <laughs> right. They, they, the founders are saying, you know, passions run high, people scream about the stuff in the newspaper or, uh, you know, some kid who was run over by a horse. Um, and they, they want to do something or have a law change the Constitution right away. It's, a, it's not going to happen right away. Yeah, right. If, if you manage to convince two-thirds of both houses of Congress and it passes the legislatures of three-quarters of the states, yeah. all right, we figure you really want it. We can't stop you. What the hell? We're dead. But, uh, okay, we're kind of at the end, kind of at the show, end of the show, and I know you always like to do some of these, uh, you have to show some of your slides and so on. These. Uh, Right, yeah. A little, little humor here. We need a little humor here. Maybe we'll do a, a picture or two. Uh, since one of these days I'll probably actually bring a, um, what would you call it, an, an anti-Trump joke. I occasionally see one that I think is funny. And it, by the way, that's, that's really my standard for jokes is they have to be funny. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I like this. This is a reference yeah. to... Um, Game of Thrones, I think they, I didn't watch Game of Thrones, terrible me, but I recognized the meme, and I won't let what we've built fall to the third world hordes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, and I, I, this was uh, something I'm fond of. I haven't seen the liberals this angry since, since yesterday. Yesterday, right. <laughs> That's a constant there. Yeah. Right? Well, that is, uh, actually, that, <clears throat> and I, I, maybe he does it because that's what he wants to do. You know, the, <laughs> the guy is very savvy. Well, one thing I, I heard a guy say it today, in fact, that I've thought about it for a long time. He, he's the first president that when you insulted him, he insults you back. The, that, yeah. the, uh, the Elijah Cummings thing didn't come from out of nowhere. No, he didn't pluck that he, out of the air. Yeah, he, he, you know, the, uh, not, uh, Elijah had basically said, some, said something nasty about, um, well, something about him too and so on. Yeah. And Donald Trump got, uh, got he said, he's... Yeah. He, he twittered back. <laughs> Fun, funny you should mention that. You know, uh, you're in a, a glass house there, buddy, and I got lots of stones. <laughs> so, in every which way. Uh, I like that. Is that true, or did you hear it on CNN? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's the whole topic of this show is media, uh, fake news. 
Oh, and I, I might I, prefer to win CNN or Fox News. There's always that they, they, they have their own. I don't know about much news in either one of them, man. That's what. Yeah, go ahead. That, I don't have this here today, but there was, I saw a great meme of it was Jesse Smollett, and he had and there was oh, a yeah. rope, and he had it around his neck, and it was, the title was "Fake News." Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Jesse Smollett was the guy that set up the. Uh, he got uh, got beat up by. Um, some white supremacists. So I think they're both black guys, though. I think yeah, they they, they like. were, but he, he described it as uh, white guys in masks, and that they sprayed him with something. And, yeah, right. And it turned uh, out he set it all up. And, and <laughs> oh, and this was when he was going out at two a.m. to the local subway to get a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I mean, it, it, and when when the cops got there, yeah, you know, he wanted them to turn off their body cams, and he was still wearing the noose, and yeah. his publicist was there. It was. <laughs> and I was, I'm looking at this thing, I, said, I wasn't there, I yeah. don't know what happened, yeah. but I can tell you it stinks to high heaven. <laughs> right, that's what the cops, <laughs> I, mean, right it, I would think the cops right away, everybody goes, this isn't right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it did not have the ring of truth. Yeah. And, you know, this is something that uh, I, I think of often enough, and this isn't actually pure humor, but yeah. you know, Im immigration, I, I, our immigration policy is to be decided by us and enforced by us, it's not to be decided <laughs> by uh, yeah, the immigrants and, 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 themselves coming right. into the country. Anybody in a village anywhere in the world says, I'm going to live in the United States. Boise, I think. <laughs> right. That's what I say. That the rest of the I think between the two coasts, in fact, really between Washington and, and New York, they have their own little world they're living in. They think everybody else is listening to them, and I don't think a lot of people really care anymore. And since I spent my first 15 years there, I got to say, you're right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, Here we f famous... We've seen her picture lots of times, but anyway, this this meme is uh, yeah naked with a supermodel. <laughs> there you that, go. That's how I sleep. <laughs> that's how I sleep. <laughs> and I, I can just hear that in his voice, even though I don't think he's ever said it. Uh, let's see if I can make that just a wee bit larger. Too. Anyway, uh, this is the concept of threat level orange. Yeah. orange. <laughs> <laughs> Since, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we're always yeah. seeing orange. And by the way, too. The guy that's now head of the British government, the guy named Boris Johnson, was the mayor of, of He was uh, mayor of Lincoln, London. Mayor of London. He was a foreign secretary and a conservative and so on. They look a lot alike. He has got that blonde hair, too. Yeah. In fact, his, his, I don't know who does his it, hair, but they... <laughs> it, it looks like a sugar bowl without the bowl. It just... Right. <laughs> it goes but out. It goes out. He's a good speaker. I, I, yeah. And, yeah. And I actually... Well, I, that's one thing about Donald. He's not a real good speaker. When, when I heard him make some remarks... And I realized that uh, he, he and I had both read uh, a book called The Elements of Eloquence yeah. that actually describes how to sound good. Yeah. Riddle me this. If, if CNN, CNN can locate a, mind, a, a meme, maker meme maker in ours, why haven't they found evidence of Trump colluding with Russia, with Russia or evading taxes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was nice investigative journalism when you do it. Yeah. Uh, by the way, can you name the, uh, the actor? No, I know the face. I just, that, that's Frank Gorshin. Yeah, that, he I, was I, I, the Riddler in the nineteen sixties. I was going to say, as soon as you say it, I'll remember it. Now, this I happen to like the idea of Trump saying, <laughs> "I'm growing stronger," but this is actually a, a a visual reference to the second pilot of the original Star Trek show, uh, where no man has gone before. Yeah, uh, this was his his friend Gary, who had been uh, blasted by some energy as the uh, passed through a barrier and he uh, he became more and more godlike as time went by and yeah. eventually he was like this. <laughs> okay. It's all genetics. Okay. Okay, well, that's her name. I can't I was forget here's it's Rashida yeah. Tlaib. Yeah. Uh, Trump hates our country. You know, I, I thought about it. And I'm pretty sure he doesn't. <laughs> right. I, I could make an argument that she hates at least the part of the country that's anything like yeah, me. She may, she may hate a little more, certainly, yeah. I, she may hate the country more than he does, put it that yeah, way. Yeah, I'm not getting a lot of hate out of Trump. That's the thing about, you know, talking about, the, he said, leave the country. And that was a racist remark, basically, a racist, to, to leave the country. Well, first of all, no, they're not going to leave. They're not going back to whatever country they supposedly came from in the first place and so on. They're, they're going to stay in the, I mean, what was it all? They all, when Trump got elected, all the actors are going to leave and move to Canada. Yeah, they're moving like to Canada that. or someplace else. I don't else. know any of them that left. Nobody left. I, I think. Miley, uh, Miley Cyrus, or her name was. Yeah. She's uh, still around. I, I think somebody might have, but, yeah. uh, but they, they visit any time they want to. Actually, 
this was not the uh, the time cover, but somebody with uh, a little bit of photoshopping yeah. photoshopped the uh, so they'd say because we. we some of us who, who like him, we're hoping that he's going to be elected in 2020. But of course, then that would be his two terms. But they're saying, well, you know, this, then uh, Ivanka could have a couple of terms, and then yeah. you know, we get out far enough, and you know, maybe uh, Donald Trump Jr. has a couple of terms. <laughs> yeah, right. So anyway, it was, it's just pure fantasy, and we, we that don't. going to happen. Not only isn't it going to talk happen. About dynasties, I, I don't, we don't want have a dynasty dynasties in this country. Oh, well, we came. We I. I didn't want a Kennedy dynasty. I don't want a Clinton dynasty, or um, or Bush dynasty, yeah. whatever. I, you know, I, I found myself looking at, you know, yeah, Jeb was okay, but I'm thinking, do we really need three Bush presidents? Yeah. I mean, there are 330 million people in the United States, yeah. and I figure that that probably means at any given moment there might be 50 to 100 thousand people who are qualified to be president. Yeah. Pick another one. Yeah. Right. It's, it doesn't have to be a Bush or a Clinton. Okay, we only got a couple minutes here, okay, so well, we're going to well, one I'll, or two more here. Okay, well, this refers to how Trump is masterful. At get, he's, he's gotten uh, Democrats to essentially defend the rats of Baltimore. He's gotten them to defend uh, illegal aliens who kill people with cars. So this, this is, uh, I think, from, what is it, Mad Men. But uh, can I say, Trump should tweet something anti-gun. I just want to see liberals defend the Second Amendment. <laughs> because, of course, if he says you know, black, they say white. Or he, exactly. He yeah, says high, exactly they say right. low, whatever. It's just okay. they, you can't because cause Trump likes it. Okay. Well, we've got a, uh, less than a minute here, so a, little, about okay, a minute well. to go and so on. It's always nice to do these at the end. We have to keep that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we come to this little... Uh, Rob and I do this quite often in a coffee shop. Don't do pretty much the same thing you're doing. That's really what this show is all about. Yeah, it doesn't pay the big bucks like this yeah, does. that's right. We can save big bucks for having that. We don't know <laughs> advertising, at least. Um, anyway, that's our, that's our spin on the, some of the stuff that's been happening here lately, and we'll, we'll be back. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs>